Hi and welcome to a new tutorial section about of working with Vue, PayPal and creating our own e-store. In this tutorial I will explain how to in insert PayPal into our um, into our web page. If you want to look at this tutorial, uh, it is based on this one on this tutorial here. I will leave the URL in the web in my in, under my my YouTube uh, under this video, and you can follow this one or follow mine. I don't mind, but mine is is adapted to my example, so you can uh, you can either do both of them or whatever. We will start by uh, explaining what we have to create first to to be able to work with PayPal. First of all. You will have to create a developer uh, a developer account, okay, a PayPal account, and automatically enter into developer uh, PayPal dot dot PayPal dot com slash developer uh, to log in as a developer. You will see that once you log in as a developer, you will find here you won't have any list of applications. I already have four, okay. You will be able to create your own app, which is really represents the web page you're creating whatever name you gave it for example i'm going to call it hello world um, and once you create the the view app the, the the paypal app sorry it will be we will use it to link it to our view app okay so uh, what's important is that you create this one here and you will have this Client ID, we will choose, we will, which will be used as credentials to link it to our web page. Very similar process we did with Firebase. We will need this uh, this ID later on to tell our web page where what is where is the PayPal uh, system to connect it, so it knows where to find this, the PayPal system and how where to send the user to pay for and charge him the money. Okay. Sandbox, as you can see, means that it works in a mock-up or a fake um, payment system, okay, PayPal system. This is done on purpose, so we can test our app as much as we want, paying with fake money and making all kinds of testing before, before passing it into a live version. You have to understand that it's a very, a very hard thing to do it to test uh, things related to payments. Because if we try it in a real life, we will have to use real life in real life money, which means real money and PayPal will charge us for each transaction. So that is why it's very important to be uh, to understand and be used to working with the sandbox um, system. In this case, the sandbox from PayPal developer. Once you create the, uh, the account, the app, you will see it in, listed here in the in the my apps and credentials here and you can go there and look at it at any time if you want to go back into hello world you press hello world and you'll find here the client thing the second section you have to understand and work with is the sandbox accounts okay the sandbox accounts allow us to create as many as as many accounts as we want to test for testing on and each of them you can create in a different for different uh, use for example you can create a new account um, either for personal or the personal testing account or a business, which means you can create, you can become as a middleman, you're, you can be a, in a situation in which your account, you're, you're, you are offering a, a middleman solution in which you have merchants and buyers which use your system to sell, uh, sell, sell products through you. So you can create either one of those. I will create a personal buyer account. You, uh, I will choose Spain to do it. You can create whatever you want. Once you create it, it will create a fake uh, temporary account with this kind of email, which you can change by going into view, edit account, and um, changes here. You can edit, change the name if you want, change the mail, You can put whatever you want. The password, you can change it as well. Okay. And you save. It may be, you may need to save it first. Uh, well, password updated, great, save. So, close. 
So in theory, if I refresh now, I will see here Yoni3, which is another personal account created now, and it's all in Sandbox, which means that you can have, you can you have not, shouldn't be worried about using that account to pay. And by the way, you will have to use those accounts for payments because it will require, require us to authenticate when we wanna make a payment. Now you can change the fundings, okay? You can change credit cards, you can make more money, put more money, less money, you can do whatever test you want. The idea is that you try to test all possible scenarios when a person doesn't have money, what happens? When a person has uh, can pay but their card is expired, what happens? Okay. All those scenarios you will have to test it for later, you have to know, use for later testing, okay? Once we finish this section, we side of the, of our, the required side of creating the app, creating the accounts and having everything ready, we can now go to the coding, okay? Before we go into our coding, our own coding, I will explain a bit how this tutorial works. Under here, you will find the same thing I just did with you. An explanation on how to create the account, uh, the sandbox accounts for testing, and under it, you will see three different uh, uh, frameworks. We are going to use the, the view framework, okay? We already have an, an app. We don't have to create another one. And what we will do, and that's the solution that uh, this tutorial gives us, which is using the PayPal checkout system, we will embed, okay, we will say how it works. We will embed, okay, we will insert an already made HTML solution made by PayPal into our web page. So we don't really have to design anything. We just have to call that um, web page section, okay, this section of web page from them and insert it into our web page, okay? And that's exactly what we're doing in this line here. The previous lines are just, we'll look at them later, but they're just like, this section shows the information of the product you're going to pay for. This section shows that the product was paid for successfully and if you can see there is an v if which means that this is a boolean that controls either if it's paid for if it's not paid for if this is false this is true and it will show this and if the if, if payment was successful it will show this okay so the fact is that all these lines are just secondary because the most important line is this one we have to create a div with a reference called paypal because later on we will call it from our JavaScript to insert the HTML here, okay? You will see. After that, we go into our JavaScript section and you will see that it created two different uh, booleans for, for, for its own functionality. We will use this one later. And it has its own product object, which will we're not going to use this one because in our case, it's a complete card we are using. So. What we will do is create a small three different variables, one which have the sum of all the products in the card, the prices of all the products, and we'll use it as a price. The second variable will be the description of the card, which will be a list of all the products we have inside the card, and that's it. The images, we don't need them, okay? I will explain later on why we have to do that, mainly because this system that PayPal gives us can only accept one product at a time, but it doesn't mean that we cannot create a super product, which is the sum of all the sub products and, and, and charge the user if he buys more than one, putting them all together in one package, okay? That's something that we will do uh, to fix that limitation that PayPal uh, imposes on us, okay? The second part is to understand a bit the code. The mounted section, it's where it, calls for the JavaScript to load from PayPal. We need to do that because the all the logic, all the code uh, for the PayPal system to work uh, exists in a JavaScript file in their own SDK and in their own servers. As you can see, we are telling that it has to load the script that is located in this section of PayPal, paypal.com, SDK, JavaScript, and we have to put all this until here, okay? This is very important because that's how he can go and load the JavaScript uh, and all these, the payment system 
and bring it to our web page. Okay. Now you will see that here it says we have to put our client ID and it's here where you have to replace this word and put the one here in your credentials. When you go to, let's go to hello world, for example, you will see here this client ID credentials. Okay. You will have to copy this and pay past it here. Okay, I cannot do it because it's a, this is a web, another web page, but you have to replace this with your credentials. Why? Because this is how PayPal knows that you have an app. He knows how to link this, uh, this payment system to which app. And eventually what you will do is um, load this script with that ID and gives us all the functionality needed to create the PayPal method for payment. Now, what we do in the following line is tell him to execute this function here, set loaded, you can see it's our own function, once this script is loaded. Why does that? Very simple, because it can take some seconds to load, and once it's loaded, we want to receive a confirmation, okay? And finally, what we added, this is a necessary an element to make, the, to, to, exec, to make this work. I mean, we have to add it to the body of our document, of our web page. Okay. Once it's loaded, it will execute all the lines in here. Okay. First of all, it will say that we, we have a boolean, which means that she said that it's loaded. Okay. We shouldn't give it a lot of importance for now. But what's important is that once it's loaded, it will access the window that PayPal will access the functionalities of the script and create a button section, which will show the all the option for payments that PayPal gives us. It will create an own proof section, which will receive um, the response of the user payment. If the payment was successful, it will execute these three lines here. And if the payment was, uh, was not successful, it will execute the console log error. And finally, on, on all these, from that buttons downwards until here, it will render it, it will show it. Render it is to show it in the HTML section and it will replace the div with this ID, refs PayPal, which is a precisely what we have here, the ref PayPal. So it will replace this section and will insert inside here all the buttons for payment, okay? And with that, I have, we have explained all the, this part of the tutorial, I've explained all this, uh, this tutorial itself. Now I will, in the following section, the following part, we will proceed with inserting it in our web page and making some changes because we are not going to mount it. We are not going to create, execute these lines at the beginning of the component because what it's doing right now is loaded at the beginning of the content. We will execute this once we press a payment, a pay button. Okay, well, you will see.